and welcome to Going Off, a Card Kingdom video series where we share our hot takes on the newest Magic the Gathering cards. I'm Hallie, and joining me on this show are two friends of Card Kingdom whose work you may have seen on our blog. We have Bradley Rose and Scott Cullen with us. Friends, how are you doing today? Hey, hey doing great. Yeah, I'm doing great. We're recording this on Thursday, March 25th, which is the day of the Strixhaven debut stream. So we're going to be digging in to all the most recent preview cards and sharing them with you. But before we kick things off, I have to ask you both, since it is Strixhaven, which of the five colleges do you each belong to? I am of the Prismari College. Being able to show some expression of art is is kind of what I already do with like my commander decks of like, here it's a thing I'm doing and uh, Prismari seems like just the ticket for that. Scott, how about you? I am also actually in the Prismari school. I am a musician. I tend to be quite emotional. I tend to express that quite a lot through music or writing or well, pretty much anything I touch. So as soon as I saw the Prismari logo and the and the and some of the characters, I was like, that's me. That's my people right there. I myself am a silver quill because when I was in school, two of my major interests were literature and fashion. And it's really interesting <laughs> to see how they've somehow combined those two into a perfect synergy. And I love it. It feels tailor-made for you, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Uh. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. That was great. That's some wordplay too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so as a tradition on this show, uh, we're going to talk about some of the hottest cards from Strixhaven. And before we even had the preview stream, we saw some planeswalkers, which looked really, really cool. So on Monday, we got our first glimpse at Kazmina Enigma Sage, uh, who we had previously seen in War of the Spark, but she's back. She's now blue and green. She's a member of the Quandrix. And what do you two think of Kazmina? The Kazmina creating fractals is interesting how Nico creates like shards, like unique tokens. But I'm loving all the little math notes here where we got X, we've got zeros and ones and square stats. Nice flavor uh, tip there. Yeah, I love particularly how she can give her abilities to other planeswalkers. It's it's going to be incredible utility for stuff like Super Friends builds because if a planeswalker doesn't have a particularly useful ability at the time, you can plus two it to scry one to help smooth out your draws. But I, re I particularly like how none of these abilities are too pushed either. It would be it, w it would have been dangerous to add, you know, Oko-like stuff to <laughs> other planeswalkers. So this is a, a nice departure from the usual Simic Mythic, I suppose. Absolutely. And she gives a plus two to mm. some planeswalkers that don't otherwise have a plus two. Maybe they have a plus one or maybe they don't have any abilities that add loyalty at all. So you can get to that ultimate pretty quickly. And her ultimate is probably one of the better ones. I think one of the first things I want to do with this, I want to play Kazmina and then I want to play Kiora Behemoth Beckoner from yeah. War of the Spark. Mm -hmm. She's three mana, seven loyalty planeswalker. So you can minus six on Kiora, make a 6-6 six, six Fractal, and then Kiora's static will trigger and draw a, cre draw a card because it's a creature with power four or greater. That seems like a pretty nice, smooth play. Ooh. Turn four, 6-6 six, six, that draws you a card with two Planeswalkers on the field. Good combo, yeah. Sweet, so we have another familiar Planeswalker joining the Strixhaven faculty named Professor Onyx, but if you look closely at her type line, you might notice that she's known by another name outside of Strixhaven. What do you two mm. think of Professor Onyx so far? Professor Onyx uh, debuting that Magecraft uh, mechanic. Looks like it's in all five colors, which is really cool. Everyone's spell slinging, and uh, I love spell slinging myself. And I think the modal double face cards in the set uh, especially in limited when you want to play a lot of creatures, but maybe some of those creatures also got instants and sorceries to help you out. 100%. I, I see her as a good value planeswalker. So she's got a nice plus one ability to, you know, get some card advantage and the minus three can help protect her because it's removal. It probably won't see a whole lot of play outside of commander. The, the combo at the moment that everyone's talking about is with Chain of Smog. It's mm. an old card that allows you to con constantly target yourself with copies of itself so that you can keep activating the or triggering Magecraft Ooh. to combo at the table. It could probably cause her to see more play than the average mid-range Planeswalker, but outside of that, it's uh, it's pretty neat. I kind of like this Liliana redesign as well. It feels like a, a more mature kind of commanding look. I quite like it. 
we also have an article up on our blog that covers both of these planeswalkers. So uh, we will put a link for that in the description below so you can check it out if you want. Moving on to the cards that we saw on the stream today, there is one more planeswalker, or rather two planeswalkers that I want to talk mm-hmm. about, and that's Will and Rowan. And Scott, I understand that you predicted that we were going to see a double-sided <laughs> Will and Rowan in this set. I did. I did. I saw art for Will and Rowan, and I remembered that Mark Rosewater, a couple of months back, when we started seeing the modal dual face cards in Zendikar and how happy they were with it and how popular they were with everyone or how popular they were with all the players, they were saying, well, we're going to keep bringing them back and there's going to be some in Call Time, there's going to be some in Strixhaven. And as soon as I heard Strixhaven and I saw the art for Will and Rowan, I was like, they're going to be on a half each. It's going to be Will on one (laughs) half, Rowan on the other, and it's going to be awesome. And I think I was completely right with all of that. This card looks sweet. It's up my alley anyway. Both sides say instants and sorceries that you cast cost one less to cast. That's just everything I want to do is just reduce the cost of those. Rowan's uh, plus one, uh, rewarding you for doing extra damage, for drawing lots of cards. Mm. Uh, it goes well in red-blue base decks like R- Riel from Ikoria, doing lots of wheeling and looting and rummaging. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to try and play this card with uh, something like a cathartic reunion or, I mean, I don't I don't know that you can play it in any format where, um, where Faithless Looting is legal, but definitely with Cathartic Reunion, I like it a lot. And uh, I think Rowan, Rowan is initially looking to me like the stronger side of this card, but she does only mm. have two starting loyalty. So we'll, we'll kind of see where she fits mm. in to the different metagames. So we also saw a lot of legendary creatures on this uh, this stream. So if you are a commander fan and you are looking for a new legendary creature to build around, you're in luck. There are a whole lot of them. And we're going to start with the face cards from Commander 2021. We'll have another episode coming up soon where we'll talk about Commander 2021 in more depth. But today, we want to talk about these cards while they're fresh in people's minds and everyone's uh, talking about them. So we saw these five new legendary creatures um and i'm curious which ones kind of spoke to you both the most and which you're most excited about i'll go with uh snatching up the prismari one here so Vi <laughs> thunder conductor this one is a uh, direction of encouraging you to play really big mana value spells which is a little bit different than maybe the lots of low mana value storm spells well which is great because it feels mm-hmm. like uh, you might build up towards a crescendo. It kind of lacks the nuance that I would typically associate with music and conductors in particular, mm. but it does highlight their ability to harness great amounts of power and emotion through just seemingly simple movements. So I can really appreciate how they, I suppose, flip the manuscript, I suppose, on it, <laughs> nice. on the typical blue-red spells archetype. So I can see myself playing this for sure. Yeah. As for my favorite, I... I'm probably going to give it to, considering you took the Zephy Thunder Conductor from from me, Brad, I'm going to have to go with Brina the Demagogue because if I wasn't Prismari, I probably would be Silverquill myself. And I do love this commander. I'm a big fan of political decks where you have loads of different options to garner favor with enemies to make them do your bidding for you. And this commander is great at doing that. I particularly also like decks that have fewer colors so that they have a stronger sense of color identity. So this kind of commander speaks much more to me than, say, the likes of Marchesa in Mardu colors or or whichever, you know. Scott, you brought up political cards in black and white, and we actually Mm -hmm. saw another card today that is kind of in the same vein. We saw Shadrick Silverquill, who is mm-hmm. the dragon founder of Silverquill College, a black and white dragon that you can also have as your commander. Uh, what do you two think of this card? I think it's wonderful to build in the rapport or the table politics with this ability. Uh, you can even maybe have some of your opponents proactively go hey if you help me out with if you target me i'll i'll do this for you um i I think that would be really cool dynamic silver quills eloquence side of things like really shine through with this elder dragon you know being like you said being able to forge deals with opponents at the table it it really adds the depth to commander that you just don't get anywhere else i particularly enjoy this one as well what i like about this ability is that it's not just a i give myself 
something and I give an opponent something, you can use two of those abilities to pay off two different opponents so that they might focus on the third opponent instead of you. So the level of depth and the scope that this has for the diplomacy at the table is enormous. I love it. Well, like I said, we saw a lot of legendary creatures today, including the deans of all the colleges. And all of these deans are like Will and Rowan. They are modal double-faced cards with one character on one side and one character on the other. And we don't have time to cover all of them today, but I'm curious if uh, you two have any favorites among them or what you think of the Dean of Prismari. Ifrit and Jin on both sides are uh, very cool as they seem to be interchangeably used. It, it's cool to see that you can have two very different uh, abilities and effects type of commanders on both sides. So you have more options um, in an elegant way for uh, a bigger color identity. The two sides are so stark in contrast. And I think that's what they were going for with the with the Deans. And they knocked it out of the park with each one of them. Like if you just take the Prismari one, the Ovilda Dean of Perfection on one half and the Sari Dean of Expression on the other, on their own side, they are exclusively incredibly that one color like the blue side is just blue and the red side is just red and what i really like about those is that they feel like monocolor commanders by themselves so you know you could for argument take set yourself a deck building challenge where you build a 99 where it's all mono blue and is only used with a vilda and then you can have a 99 that's only used with an asari that's mono red and then you could even have a third 99 where it can use either side so I really love the, again, modality of these kind of cards or just cards in general is something I really, really love. Yeah, that is that is a fascinating deck building challenge. I want to try that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the red side I, with casting spells from exile, you, you see usually a lot of those in red with the uh, impulsive draw uh, type of style, mm-hmm. which is just exile from top play until end of turn. Yeah, I would love to explore a mono red uh, just with using all of those effects. Were there any other deans that stood out to you both? There was one Plarg Dean of Chaos, I think that's how you say it, and Augusta Dean of Order. Plarg side, the mono red side, tap to discard a card to draw a card is interesting as like a little bit of maybe a madness enabler or that kind of thing. Their ability to pay five, tap it and reveal cards until you hit a non-land card with mana value three or less and being able to to cast it without paying its mana cost, that's, that's quite neat. And that can lead to some interesting, unique sort of plays. But the thing I really like is Augusta Dean of Order. Her ability of other tap creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, means that aggressive creatures get nice and aggressive. And it says untapped creatures you control get plus zero oh, plus one. So the defensive creatures get more defensive. But then whenever you attack, you're able to untap all the creatures you control and then tap them all again if you want. So you can decide how aggressive or how defensive you want to be in your combat step it allows for like more of a surgical style of combat which is not really something that you usually see in well m- most decks really because it tends to be oh you want to attack well here's a huge boost or you want to defend well here's a huge wall you know there's there's never really that fine tuning available so this really appeals to me to be able to to get that granular with with combat steps i think i really like that it's been really interesting to see how with these colleges they are really expanding what these two color pairs are capable of you know to your point a lot of the time boros has this reputation for just attacking constantly and there are so many combat focused boros commanders like aurelia is a really popular one or giselle is a really popular one and you know we we see a lot of cards that are created for those with those decks in mind And it's really cool to see those color pairs being given a bit more depth, a bit more, uh, a bit more range. Um, And I hope we see even more of that as the previews continue. There is a new mechanic called Learn that we wanted to talk about. There are specific cards called Lesson Cards. It's a subtype that certain cards will have, sort of like in Kamigawa block, how there were some cards that had the type Arcane. Lesson is very similar in this set. These are cards that uh, you can put outside the game, either in your sideboard or wherever uh, you keep them if you're playing a casual game. These are cards that you can effectively tutor up. Uh, Tutor. Ah, Okay, that was probably intentional. 
That's, that's probably intentional. That's, that's great. Um, so you picked yeah, up on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can you can effectively tutor for these cards, uh, or if you don't want to, you can just discard a card to draw a card. And we saw a couple uh, cards with the learn mechanic or cards with the lesson type uh, already today. What do we think of this mechanic so far? I love learning so much. I just need to learn the right way. And I think being able to tutor these lessons from the sideboard is the kind of way that I want to learn. Introduction to Prophecy is one that stood out to me. It's a preordain, and I'm a blue-red mage. Prismari mage, I suppose, is now the, the term. I'll take any opportunity to get a preordain. I don't care how I get it. It's fantastic. I love it. And the fact that these are colorless, as some of these lessons are colorless, there are a lot of commander decks that are going to get a huge boon from some of these. There are colorless commander decks that are out there that are very popular. So when I saw these colorless options to have a preordain in my deck and that kind of thing, that's phenomenal. That's a huge boost to those kinds of decks. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, we, we got to support our Eldrazi and Thopter colorless commander decks for sure. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I I like the, for, for limited, that uh, most of these you said they're colorless. There's also some hybrid lesson cards. I think that was a great yes. choice uh, because when you're, especially if you're drafting, you want to pay attention to having at least one lesson in your sideboard because you're probably going to have uh, some uh, cards that will look for lessons and it really goes a long way to have that extra spell. Um, if you have a couple more, you might end up with uh, some leftover lessons, which is not as bad, but uh, this will go into a lot of different decks, this colorless and hybrid cards. We also have a new dual land cycle in this set called the Snarls. Uh, these are lands that enter the battlefield tapped unless you reveal one of two types of land cards from your hand. So for example, for the black green one, if you reveal a swamp or a forest, it will come into play untapped. Otherwise, it'll come into play tapped. What do you, what do you think of these cards? I've been building some enemy color commander decks recently and looking at the dual land options, I would get a little a little jealous of how ally color pairs would be a little ahead. So um, it's nice to have a, yet an extra option um, for the uh, two color decks in Commander. They should be nice and affordable as well. So more affordable dual lands are always welcome. And it is really nice to see them round out a cycle of lands. Yeah. I, 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 I can't stand having just five of the 10 lands. I'm like, give me those other five. Come on, I need to build decks. <laughs> they're, they're not the best ones though, I will say, because you do need to reveal a basic type um, from your hand. So they have a little bit of tension with the pathway lands that are currently in standard and are seeing a lot of play in Pioneer as well because they don't have typings on them. So if I had to build a deck with say two colors i probably wouldn't choose these over the pathways but maybe i'll use one or two so they're they're nice to have as an additional option and can i just say the art on these looks so good it does oh beautiful it's great where the where the two different colors of mana just converge and they they've said now ca canonically that's what a snarl is called that's <laughs> that's what that's what it is and oh that's awesome it looks so good right yeah my compliments to the uh, the naming chefs uh, for Snarls. Uh, that, they <laughs> sound so fun. Well, speaking of cards that look great, we got some more Mystical Archive cards revealed today. Now, these are oh, these yeah. are all reprints of existing Magic cards, except for one, Abundant Harvest, which is a preview of Modern Horizons mm. 2, if you can believe Whoa. it. Uh, yeah, I know. We got a card early. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we have, so far we have Duress, Lightning Bolt, Time Warp, Channel, Strategic Planning, and Counterspell as of this this recording. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on, on these designs and uh, which art you like the best. I, I have been recently looking at my Lightning Bolt options uh, just for a spicy include <laughs> for a commander. And uh, I, you know, looking through, I go, uh, I, I can either have like, the more modern looking kind of same art of the old lightning bolt or yeah, there's not, not too many options for variations on how they look. And I really appreciate the, the really stylized look of lightning bolt in this one. I am forever trying to make art like Phoenix work in any format I can. <laughs> and one way in which I've attempted to do that in pioneer and to some reasonable success, to be honest, is through the use of strategic planning mm -hmm. and the strategic planning looks phenomenal it looks so good i immediately need to get myself a place out of them <laughs> and put them right in as for the japanese alternate art ones oh yeah 
the lightning bolts hands down the one of the greatest things i've ever seen in my life yeah i i I can't get over it i can't get over it yeah i i love the treatment that they did with all of these cards it's like you get secret layers in every pack basically you get a (laughs) tiny little bit of secret layer in every pack just because of the art style well those have been our thoughts on the strixhaven previews we've seen so far we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments so let us know what you think of some of the cards we mentioned or some of the cards we didn't get to mention on this on this show we will have another episode of going off coming next week covering even more strixhaven preview cards and an episode the following week all about Commander 2021. So be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified when those are live. And if you want to pre-order Strixhaven, you can at cardkingdom.com. You can grab some booster boxes, some singles, or even a set of five Commander decks. We have all the products that you're looking for. And until next time, I've been Hallie. I've been Bradley. And I've been Scott. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.